Hey guys, please like and subscribe and go to ProPhotoEdits.com. You can download the uh, Lightroom presets and the Photoshop actions we're going to use to edit this. So here we go. Today, we were in a record store as we were walking down um, the street, me and my friend Tyler, the model, and we decided to go inside. This is a multi-part shoot. We did a lot this day, but um, for this particular scenario, I'm using the uh z7 and the z6 um z7 is filming and shooting right now um through the lens and inside of here i use a lot i use the 85 1.4 g and i use the 58 1.4 g but this particular um group of images and the one we're going to edit was with the sigma art 35 1.4 and um i just wanted a, a little bit of a wider range inside the record store so for this framing i wanted her to lean in a little bit and put her head up further so i could get that uh more of a wide angle 35 up close look and get a lot of the records on the floor and just a little bit more of the background but still get a nice um colorful dreamy image we're dealing with a lot of reflections from the overhead lighting but i'll show you how to take care of that in photoshop so here's what we're going to end up with today so just stick through the whole edit and let's get it the raw file was in the description box. Today I wanted to do a, um, a vibrant edit with some of my presets and actions to show you guys how to do um, those style of edits. It's all included in my pack. So if you guys head to ProPhotoEdits.com, I probably already said this in the front of the video, and uh, you can grab those and um, show you how to do this. This is a shot from the floor of the of the record store we were shooting at with the um, Z7 and the 35 1.4 Sigma Art. Um, I, this is straight out of the camera and um, I'm shooting Kelvin 4900 which I don't I don't care about because I changed that post anyway. So what preset I stuck with for this was the Vibrant number 10 and obviously I changed my white balance from 5400 which was what I said on that um, I went to 36.99 and that brought back a lot of the uh, color so now you can already see that we've got nice vibrant tones that are coming from the lips the records um, so now what I want to do is I want to drag and this is pretty much standard with every preset drag the shadows up a bit more around the 90 range and the highlights down around minus 30 something and then just to fix this um the darker areas over here let's go over here and go to a new exposure and um this is your gradiated filter and just click on that and then go down here to you can choose like exposure from the drop down list and just bring it up to like plus 20 maybe plus 30 or something and drag it from the corners and then you can add a little bit of more light. You don't want to go too crazy because we're going to fix a lot of the other stuff in Photoshop. And then do it again from this corner. And now we've kind of fixed um, a little bit of the issues we had with it being so dark around her this area right here is just the the way the floor is in the actual room um, so we can fix that in Photoshop if you want if not just leave it how it is all right so we're gonna grab that and we're gonna go into Photoshop to just go to edit into Photoshop and this is the image that we'll take in okay so duplicate your background layer of course it makes me click on that um, and this is what we're gonna do. I didn't have the glasses that I that I uh, needed this day. Um, you can buy the blue blocker glasses that help out with the um, uh, reflectivity of the lights and stuff like that. So you won't get as much of this. I like I like some of this, but I don't like it directly over the eyeball. So here's a trick that you can do, and it works um, pretty well. Depending on your uh, your pose and the orientation, you go down to transform in the edit menu, edit drop down, and flip horizontal, 
this is on your duplicate layer okay and now you want to pull the opacity down so you can sort of see both images and you will line them up like you just want to line the eyeball up so I'm gonna zoom way in here until And I'm just using my cursor on my keyboard until I see the eye. It's in the same place as the last, <laughs> the other eye, um, the one underneath. Okay, so there is the original, there's the new, so the eyeball is in the same place. So now you just want to turn your opacity way back up all the way and put a layer mask on there right here command I to invert it so now you can't see it anymore and what you want to do is since this layer is black you want to paint white over it with your brush at a hundred percent and you just want to paint that the, the eyeball back in from the other side right um, so that was actually pretty easy to do I don't mind this little bit of flare right there a flare I mean reflection because I like I like a little bit of reflection in the image I like all the other stuff on the glasses except for this and I'm going to show you how to get rid of that one too so I'll Apple Shift E, Alt Command Shift E, uh, um, create a stamp visible layer. So now we can edit this part. So what I'm going to do is let's zoom in. I'm going to grab that reflection and pull it down here. Okay, and we're just getting started. I'm going to fix this other part in a second. Grab that reflection, pull it over here. And now we obviously have this to deal with. So now what we want to do is go to your clone stamp tool. I have it on 100% opacity, 100% flow. And we're going to alt to sample this. Or this start up here. Sample that. And bring it down. It's a little bit too bright. So let's go work our way up. Sample this part. Bring it up. Put it there. Sample this part. Bring it down. Put it there and um, undo that let's bring our opacity down a bit so that way yeah we'll lose a little bit of the um and sample that part line it up if you can bring it there sample that part Bring it there. Sample this part. Bring it there. I think it's kind of tricky. Okay, so I duplicated the layer again. And um, we're going to get rid of the rest of these reflections. If you, if you like them, leave them out. I probably would leave them if I wasn't doing the um, the video for you guys. Just clone. I mean, um, this is the patch tool. I might get a little bit. So I'm going to speed this up for you guys. What I'm doing is just the same process I did for the other eye. I'm going to flip the image over again, duplicate the background, flip it horizontally, and use the other eye again on the other side and mask it back in and then use the um, clone stamp to drag the uh, the good parts of the eye over and it works out just perfect okay so now that we've removed all the um, reflections that we really want to remove we're going to fix this blotchy stuff in a second but apple g of course apple g command g Group those together and you see 
where we came from, where we're at now, fine. Create a new stamp visible layer, like we did earlier. And now I'm just going to go and go around the skin and just do what we always do with the patch tool. So I'll speed this up again and I'm just dragging a few blemishes here and there off with the patch tool. And um, getting through this part before we do the frequency separation. And you can hit the hands too, the okay. knuckles and stuff like that. So that looks good. Now what we're going to do is go to PPE frequency separation, run that. It's going to give you directions, but here's what you do. Um, 10 looks fine for the, for this. Keep the radius at 10 for images like this. Um, go to your lower frequency layer. Go to select your magic wand tool. We're already at feather 10 picks. Um, so that'll work fine. You just want your feather to be the same as your radius. Go, well first we need to select an area of skin. It's going to start with the forehead. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you see as you get way up here, it just looks ridiculous. Some people get real crazy. Um, I don't get as crazy as some people do. I think for this, 6.6 .6 is adequate. You have to select a big enough area. So in the glasses, it's always kind of... Hit touch and go. This early in the morning, my hands are cold. There you go. Get on this side. I'm not trying to be sloppy guys, but I'm not trying to waste a bunch of your time on this video either. I can edit this image anytime I want. You don't want to get the glasses in there. So I'm going to speed this up, hyper speed, and we're going to run through this real quick. All I'm doing is just finishing the... Um, the frequency separation using the Gaussian blur and remember to hit the hands too, um, the knuckles and stuff like that. So now what we want to do is stamp visible and we want to go to skin perfection. This is where we're going to fix all the other issues. So now we see what we need to see in here, our helper layer. This is going to help us see all the the shadows and I'm gonna bring the reds up a little bit because we don't need to see that many shadows and now you always want to be on your your gray layer here get your brush tool 70% opacity 1% flow and you need to be on white white to draw away the uh, the shadows black to draw away the highlights and if you hit X on your keyboard it'll toggle these for you so we're going to be with white. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to start with this area right here. So I'll speed this up because you guys probably know the drill by now. Just follow what the action says to do. Your um, brush will be on white to draw away the shadows at 70% opacity, 1% flow. And uh, you can kind of see on the face since the helper's helping you out um, where the shadows are. Of course, the glasses are casting a little bit of a shadow and then the uneven skin. Just make sure your gradients, and as you can see, like the knuckles and stuff, make sure that um, your gradients are going from light to dark without a big transition in between. And your images will look nice and smooth on the skin. So now we have that out of the way. Before, after. Good job. So we're going to dodging method 2. And as soon as you click on this black mask where you want to be, it's already going to select your um, dodge tool. And it's going to give you the exact um, exposure and shadow um, settings that you need. So you don't have to worry about any of that. My actions take care of pretty much everything for you guys um, as far as getting your, 
your stuff set up and if it doesn't it'll tell you in the directions how to do it all right she's already got some real natural highlights down there so we're going to leave that we're going to swipe over the eyes just like once under the eyelids you don't want to just use your eyes and see if it's looking good or not you don't want to overdo it like barbie doll status she's already um kind of peeking out in some of these areas so I hit the lips a lot and then we'll hit the hair just a touch We're going to hit the shoulder because it has a natural highlight on it. Hit the collarbone just a bit. Every time, every swipe, you get smaller with your brush size. The hands I'm not going to mess with. Um, I'm going to hit this curl on her hair. Pop it out a bit. Just certain parts of the hair. Don't go crazy and just work in one area for a long time. That's not going to be necessary. Alright. So before and after that. Let's make it even cleaner. I'm going to hit this shoulder one more time. Boom. Boom. And this is where you get your your um, really clean overdone look from I'm not saying this image is overdone not to me at least but I'm saying if you want to make something overdone this is the tool to do it um, but like I said I typically don't overdo stuff and there's a cool trick if you said hey I, I like where I, I drew but I, I need more of it just duplicate that layer Apple J boom now you have your highlights even more it's the same exact thing you did it's just twice as deep so pull that up a little bit if you want to really go but I um I'll probably stick right there all right so now let's go to the eyes First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Eyes Sharper PPE. Run that action. Opacity 75%, flow 100. Click on your black layer, of course. Brush tool. White is your color. 75. 100. And just draw over the eye and you know the bottom part of the eyelids top part of the eyelids in certain scenarios it works better for that than others just depends on i guess how much um under eye makeup they have on so that's cool Sharpen the eyes up for us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Dodging Method 2 again. And we're going to draw on the eyes a bit. Let's draw the, uh, the catch lights. Or I guess the fluorescent lights from above. Let's make those a little bit brighter. And then... It's just pop part of the, um, the iris out a bit. Usually light enters on one side and leaves on the other, but this is like a weird scenario because it's like directly lit. So we're going to have to decide what part of the eye we want to brighten. Don't go around the whole entire iris that looks like an alien. Um, pick an area and every swipe make your brush 
smaller so you can build up. And trust me, a little bit goes a long way for this. And it's just contrast and brightness, so usually you have a catch light that extends onto the the iris that you can really accentuate. It's not just right there on the pupils. Um, so that's cool. It's not looking fake or anything yet. Um, and I don't want it to. Um, so now we're going to go to eyeshadows. Run that. 25%. Click on your black layer, go back to your brush tool, 25% opacity, and with your white color, we're going to just hit, sorry, darken it, we're going to just hit the, um, the bottoms of the eyes, and you can even go around it, since it's such a, a small adjustment, you can even go around the, um, outside of the eyes and in the pupils if you want trace around the eyes and um, it'll look better now we're going to go to eyes and smile whiter 100% click on your black layer mask we have a brush white color 100% opacity 100% flow and what we're going to do here is get rid of the color cast in the room on the eyes. Uh, the whites of the eyes, I should say. Because the room will always cast something in there. Usually it's like a, a brown in this type of scenario. Only on the whites. And if you get into a scenario like this where she has some, like a red color cast over there, run this action again. And over here on this part where it's red, just hit it again. And there's other methods for doing that, but that's kind of what I do when I'm this far out. If I was like directly... Um, editing her eye on a really close portrait, I would do clone stamp, clone stamp, clone stamp, and uh, get rid of all that. Okay. So now, we can group these, and just to show you, the eyes are white. Now, they're not distracting. And, um, if you wanted to make them whiter, you can just pull this all the way up. I'm going to leave it around 70%. Okay. So now let's go back and look at what we did to the eyes there. And what you can do is if you want to duplicate this layer with the dodge tool where we, we um, accentuated the highlights in the eyes and the and iris, Run it again. Now you're getting that crazy over the top um, Instagram eyes on fire type look, which some people like, some people don't. I don't really want to make her eyes look like marbles. Um, so maybe I'll just bring it to right. right there. Since this is already like a punchy edit, um, that's where I'm going to stop with that. Bring it down even a bit more because you can always undo. Alright, so let's go on to the next step. We're almost done. Okay guys, so we're almost done. Um, since I'm doing this in real time with you guys, I'm going to show you what I did to to get to the almost the last step here. I ran my contrast pop action which is right here. I can just run it again and show you what I did. I just ran it. <laughs> and um, it's going to really pop the contrast out a bit in the punchy images like this for you. As you can see, 
Um, what's that on? Forty percent opacity. Yeah, I brought mine down to thirty nine. Ooh, big difference. So anywhere in this area is going to give you what you want. Pull that out of the, out of the trash because I already did that. All right. So the other things I did was, and I'll, I'll walk you through this real quick. I um I brought down the background highlights just a little bit, and this is totally up to you if you want to do this. And then I lightened the the shadow areas just a touch around her. And then you see how this yellow is kind of dark and it just doesn't match her highlight of her hair and it could it's just so I, I changed that to really make her pop a little bit so now everything has the same type of vibe so I'll show you how I did all that and it's all everything's in my action set um, so what you want to do right here for the background is go to and I use this a lot on images where the the background is kind of blown out and, and uh, that's a trick that a lot of people do is go to darken background I run that action okay so what you do is on on the white layer here the mask select your black brush get it 100 percent flow 100 percent opacity and the easiest way to do is just brush it off of your subject now don't be sloppy i've already done this on the other one um, but it's not it's not really hard to get it right make your brush smaller and smaller you don't want to see like any um halos around your person some people do that when they're drawing in Photoshop and you can see it on the picture and if you do just switch to your other color and go back around and, and fix it um, this is like spotlighting in a very harsh way and then I just bring this down to where it's not, I don't want it to be like that, it looks ridiculous just bring it down into where you've darkened the background just a little bit what I leave this one on I left this one on 37% yeah 37 looks good to me what's this one on, 28 okay so that's what I did there and then you see the areas where we couldn't quite get the the, um, the transition right in Lightroom it was a little bit dark here and just dark a little bit there there's a uh, action that I have in here called background lights and darks run that opacity to 20% flow to 100 well usually what I do with this is white is going to give you well the white is going to lighten black is going to darken so for with the white i just stick on 20 percent opacity and 20 percent flow and just take a little bit more time so what you want to do is just get your brush and kind of paint over with white over the areas that you want to lighten a little bit and it's not going to be anything crazy that's why i have it on 20 so you can kind of not be obvious about what you're doing and um just eliminate any of the super dark distracting areas I'm not going to hit this too much um, so they don't you know take away from the image but don't be heavy handed on this at all and um, so that's what you got there looks better less distracting that area there is gone um, so we've done that. Which one do I? That looks fine to me. Um, I'll bring it down just a bit. And now this is what I did to, to change the um, to change this yellow. And this isn't the action because there's no action I can make to make it perfect for each image. Just so it's not like slightly different from the yellow in her hair um, it makes the image pop a little bit more when your colors are consistent so what I did was I went into selective color let's see what I did magentas minus 19 yellows plus 3 okay so I'll redo this selective color right here run that 
go into your yellow channel. You have all your channels here, but we're working on the yellows. And um, what I say I did? Magentas, minus 19 yellows, plus 3. So I was just watching the background and messing around with my yellow channel until I saw that it was getting close to where her hair was. And then went to the yellow channel of the yellow and pulled it up a little bit just to touch and then after you even mask it now what you want to do is invert it because you don't want it on the whole image so if you press um, Apple I or command I it goes away but it's still under there you can draw it back where you want it so now at a hundred percent opacity hundred percent flow you just want to draw this in over the yellow and it'll change the um, the hue I guess of the yellow get this I want a little bit overboard on her or overspread on the hair a little bit um, until they match a little bit better and it'll make your subject pop out a little bit more all right so now let's wrap this up and tone it one final time and um, finish it off okay so now we've got our image pretty much done it's nice and punchy it's vibrant it's lively um, just show you where we're at from where we started right now group all those together actually it won't let me group the background group all those together so that's where we're at it looks great um, what I would do is totally your call let's do this two different ways let's make a background um, merge visible Apple alt shift E now we have and we can run one of these actions for my color toning actions or we can do it um, with the two-step uh, process by hand I'll show you both versions real quick um, it's still a little bit warm to me um, so I'll run my mellow PPE color toning action and um, this is still going to retain all your color um, but I will go to the curves and I will bring this down to bring a little bit more of the blacks back into I'll go to the hue saturation and I'll bring this down because it's really taking away some of the saturation on, on this particular one um, on the blue channel I will bring this down to about I don't know five maybe and then I'll bring the yellow split toning down to maybe a three maybe I'll put this back up around seven um, let's see where we have our curves yeah so that's giving you more of a uh, push up on the blacks but still maintaining a lot of the color and um, that's one way to do it And that hue saturation is taking a little bit more out of it. Pull that down a touch. So these sets that I've made at the bottom here, I think there's nine or ten of them for you guys are just extra ways to tone at the very end um, in an action set. Like if you don't know a lot about it, it'll do it for you. So there we have it before, after. It's really cool. Okay, so if you didn't want to do it that way, to forget we even even did this go back to the the layer we created and um, I think it was this one and what you do, do is go okay shadow toning PPE this is how I tone my shadows a lot of times works very well so now it's going to apply the image to this, so it's only going to go into the uh, the darker areas. I mean, the darker areas will be affected a lot more. Open up the folder, turn all these off. These are just your different color options. Um, see, do you like blues in your shadows? Blues are cool. How about greens? It's more of a matte look. 
yellow, and it's going to different be different on every image. Purples, dark purple, blue um, seems to work well here, and you can double click, click on the blue and change the amount of blue. I would go higher like that a bit, or I guess that that the, the um, actual color of the blue. That's really cool. And it's at 14, I'd bring it down to the opacity down to around, I don't know, 10. And you can go on this area where this is the mask, remember, and go to your black and pull this opacity way down to like 8. 100% flow and just take it off the face just a bit. You don't want too much on the skin because those aren't dark areas. So there you go. A lot of the tones. We have the blue in the background. Let's take this back down to around 12 maybe. Okay, now above this, flatten this folder out again. Complete image toning. Run that. And do the same thing. Open it up. Start clicking these off. And just start fresh with none of them turned on and go through and see what you want your overall tone to be. This is like another way to split tone in a way. Purple's pretty rich and warm. Green is nice. I like this color a little bit, this blue. I'll go into this blue and maybe move it up a touch. That's cool. And I'll bring this down from 6% to maybe 3%. Just a little bit in there. And um, so we're pretty much done with this. If you're unhappy with your color, color balance, you can tone in there as well. And I didn't make actions for color balance because this is... Um, going to be so different per image you can never have an action of color balance that will work well for each thing maybe raise your blues just a touch on the um, mid-tones this is pretty heavy-handed um, go into the shadows maybe raise the blues just a touch maybe not maybe the cyan's down a bit got it pretty much where you want it I don't want to start making it look matte now um, highlights, blues up a bit, that removes just a slight bit of the yellow color cast. And then more towards the cyan channel, a little bit more towards the green, no, I like it right there. So there you go, guys go, I mean this, with just a small color balance adjustment even gives you a little bit more color but um your difference here was with these two image tonings off and on this group these so you can see apple g well first we gotta turn them on boom, boom. okay that's with it with that's without and we'll turn those off and then we'll go to the metal tone preset. And um, I mean, I like that. That's where I would go. I mean, I've spent a lot of time making those. And you can even just bring the whole folder down a bit if you think it's a little bit much. To a place where you're right and happy feel with. All right, so whenever you're done doing all that, um, what you want to do is just sharpen it and you'll be done. And that's it. Stage sharpening, run that. And um, so if we zoom in on, on her eyes, we can really see what our uh, stage sharpening action did. I don't know if YouTube will pick that up or not, but it's a big difference. And it sharpened the glasses a lot. And if it's too much for your image, just grab the opacity of that and it'll bring it down. And that'll be all the layers at the same time that we sharpened. And 
So that'll be it. Let's group this all together again just so I can show you. That's what we came in with. That's what we left with. Looks great in my opinion. And I'll see you guys on the next edit.